Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel, myself Bhavesh Patel from Vithalam Consultant. In the first video of air psychometry, I have introduced air psychometry and discussed about atmospheric air. In this second video, I will discuss about properties of air. So let's start. The first property is drypal temperature. It is the air temperature measured using a standard thermometer where the bulb is dry and hence there is no effect of moisture present in the air. When people refer to the temperature of the air, they are normally referring to its tripal temperature. It is the temperature reported in daily weather forecast and is referred to as the ambient air temperature. Another one is the wet bulb temperature which is measured by a standard thermometer. However, a bulb is covered with a wick saturated having ambient temperature liquid water. The instrument used to measure wet bulb temperature along with dry bulb temperature is known as sling psychrometer. It is a very simple device, contains two thermometers, one of which is dry and second one is covered with a wetted wick. When the sling psychometer is spun rapidly in the air, the water from the wick evaporates, draws heat from the thermometer, which causes the wet bulb thermometer to read lower than the dry bulb thermometer. After the psychrometer has been spun long enough, so that the thermometers will reach to equilibrium temperatures, the device is stopped and the readings are quickly noted. These two thermometers measure the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature of the air. Next is the wet bulb depression. Basically it is the difference between the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. It depends upon the humidity of air. So let's understand the humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor present in the air. Water vapor is generally invisible to the human eye. If there is a lot of water vapor in the air, the humidity will be high. The higher the humidity, the wetter it feels outside. There are several ways the humidity of the air can be expressed. First one absolute humidity, second one specific humidity also known as the humidity ratio or humidity factor. Third one is the relative humidity. Let's understand absolute humidity. It is the amount or mass of water vapor per unit volume of air usually measured in gram per meter cube. It is not often used to express the moisture content of air because it is sensitive to the changes in both the temperature of the air as well as pressure. For example, let's say 1 meter cube parcel of air at the ground level has 2 grams of water in it. So the absolute humidity is 2 grams per meter cube. Now let's lift the parcel of air upwards into the atmosphere. As the air rises upward, the decrease in the atmospheric pressures on the parcel allows it to expand outward, occupying more space. Let's say the parcel doubles in size as a result of uplift. As the air doubles in volume, the revised absolute humidity is 1 gram per meter cube. In actually the parcel still, ha still has the same mass of water in it, that is 2 grams only. But given the way absolute humidity is calculated, it appears the amount of water in the air has decreased. And that is the reason absolute humidity is not being used. Then there is a specific humidity or humidity ratio also known as a humidity factor. It is measured as the mass of water vapor in the air per unit mass of air, which includes the mass of water vapor too. The units of measurements are gram of water vapor per kilogram of dry air. Relative humidity. It is the amount of moisture in the air compared to the maximum amount of moisture the air can hold at particular temperature. In other words, it is the ratio of amount of moisture present to the amount of moisture needed to saturate 
keeping unit volume of dry air at a particular temperature. Ratio expressed as a percentage. Think of the air at a chilly minus 10 degrees Celsius. At that temperature, the air can hold maximum 2.2 grams of water per cubic meter. So, if there are 2.2 grams of water per cubic meter at minus 10 degrees Celsius outside, we feel uncomfortable as the relative humidity is 100%. If there is 1.1 grams of water in the air at minus 10 degrees Celsius, we feel comfortable because relative humidity is 50%. When humidity is high, the air is so clogged with water vapor that there is no room for much else. If we sweat when it's humid, it can be hard to cool off because our sweat can't evaporate into air like it's supposed to be normally. This is another way to represent relative humidity. It is the fraction representing, representing the uh, amount of water vapor in the air versus the amount of vapor needed to saturate the air. So RH is basically a ratio and normally it is expressed as a percentage. E actual is the amount of moisture actually available divided by E saturation. That is the amount of moisture required to become saturated at a particular temperature. You can see here at 10 degrees Celsius, let's say water vapor is X gram showing RH 100%. Keeping the same amount of moisture that is X gram only, if we increase the temperature from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius, the relative humidity will reduce from 100% to 53%. This is because at higher temperature, air required more moisture to become saturated. Same way, keeping the same amount of moisture that is X gram, if we increase the air temperature from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, the relative humidity will further reduce from 53% to 28%. Let's understand relationship between humidity, wet bulb temperature and wet bulb depressions. If the air is very humid, means highly moist, only a small amount of moisture will evaporate. This means the wet bulb temperature will only be a little lower than the dry bulb temperature. So, wet bulb depression will be near to zero. Conversely, if the humidity of the air is low, means dry, the moisture will evaporate quickly. This means the wet bulb temperature will be much lower than the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb depression will be higher. The wet bulb behavior depends upon the extent to which the air is saturated, that is, its percentage of saturations, in other words, it is a relative humidity. If the air is 100% saturated, no evaporation of the water can occur. Therefore, it will register the same temperature as a dry bulb, making wet bulb depressions to zero. If the air is 0% saturated, that is 100% dry, it will cause maximum evaporation from the bulb. The enthalpy of the evaporation or heat will be drawn from the remaining water which depressing its temperature and making wet bulb depressions to the maximum. And if the air is between 0% to 100% saturation, the wet bulb will register an intermediate depression. Dew point temperature. Remember the fundamental. When air can't hold all the moisture, then it condenses as a dew. So the dew point temperature is the air temperature when the moisture in the air begins to condense or change form from vapor to liquid. In order for a surface to collect dew out of the air, for example, a glass of ice water or a blade of a grass, the temperature of that surface must be at or below the dew point temperature of air. When we cool air below its dew point, moisture capacity is reduced and water vapor will condense to form liquid which is known as a dew. Let's understand with one example. If air 
is at 80 degree Fahrenheit and having 90% relative humidity, then what will be the dew point? Obviously, it is less than 80 degree Fahrenheit, but definitely nearer to 80 degree Fahrenheit because the relative humidity is almost 90%. So it is 78 degree Fahrenheit. This we can find out from the psychometric chart. How? I will explain in the next video of psychometric chart. So if we cool the air to 78 degree Fahrenheit, it means just by 2, de two degree Fahrenheit cooling only, the water will start condensing. Same way, there is another air which is at same temperature that is 80 degree Fahrenheit but having a 50% RS lower than the earlier one. The dew point will be certainly less than 80 degree Fahrenheit but even lesser than the 78 degree Fahrenheit and it is 60 degree Fahrenheit. So if we cool this air to 60 degree Fahrenheit, it means by 20 degree Fahrenheit reductions of temperature, condensation will start. Higher the RH, nearer is the dew point. Less cooling is required for condensation and same vice versa. In the next video, I will take this subject further. For such videos, like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel.